It is now time for members' statements. The member from Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. In Perth Wellington, we have so many dedicated volunteers and generous residents who work hard to make Christmas a time for everyone, everyone can celebrate. It's impossible to name them all in the time I have, but I want to recognize a few. In Stratford, Ruth and Richard Niner have organized the to Stratford with Love, Love Dinner for 27 years. Together with volunteers, they serve Christmas dinner to 700 people. In St. Mary's in Listowel, the Perth County OPP and the Salvation Army partner for this annual Stuff a Cruiser event. They collect toys and sports equipment for kids to open on Christmas morning. Across our riding, including Arthur, Harrison, Drayton, Mount Forest, and Palmerston, hampers full of food and gifts are distributed to families. Service clubs and food banks work together to bring cheer to all families. In Mitchell, the Christmas Kettle Campaign supports the Mitchell and District Food Bank and provides families with food and clothing. Christmas kettles can be found in communities across the province. And yesterday, Justin Bieber held a benefit show with all proceeds going to support the Stratford House of Blessing. I, I, would like to thank, I would like to thank all of our community agencies and all those who give generously to make Christmas a time that all families can come together and celebrate. I encourage anyone who is interested in spreading some Christmas cheer to contact a charitable organization in their community. May this generous spirit last all year long. From my family to yours, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, first responders in my riding of Essex always answer the call. While many of us are running away from danger, we ask them to run head first into it. They keep our roads safe, they pull us from burning buildings, they stabilize us and provide us first aid while speedily transporting us to hospitals, all in a day's work, Speaker. They also contribute greatly to our communities on their own time. They identify a need or a cause and move in to fill that need. Essex OPP Constable Joe Malosh is spearheading Santa's Cause for Kids. In partnership with Essex Fire and Rescue, they've been gathering toys in Essex with the help of local businesses for the last 13 years. I would encourage everyone to help out Joe and, and this great cause to make sure that every kid in Essex has a few toys under the tree this year. Donations can be made at the Essex Party and Discount, home, home hardware stores in Essex, Harrow and McGregor, Ken Lapin and Sons Trucking, the Dollar Tree, Red Apple and Ken Not Ford in Essex also have drop boxes. Toys can also be dropped off at Essex Fire Stations number one and number two in Gesto. Speaker, I want to thank Joe and all of his colleagues. Wish them all a Merry Christmas. Speaker, while we have the opportunity to highlight what first responders do for us, let's Let's imagine and let's, uh, let's see if we can help them. Uh, they've been asking for quite some time recognition for post-traumatic stress disorder. There's a bill on the docket here, Bill Number 2. It would, be, it would recognize the strain and the post-traumatic stress that they encounter every day, all in a day's work. We can wish them and grant them a wonderful uh, Christmas gift uh, by, by passing that bill, Bill 2, and ensuring that our first responders are, are treated fairly and given the resources that they need in their line of duty. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members, the member from North Cumberland, 20 West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it's indeed my honour to share some exciting news taking place in my riding next week, Speaker. The Town of Coburg will co-host the 2015 World Junior A Challenge Hockey Tournament with the Town of Whitby, with pre-tournament exhibition games held locally in Wellington and Quinty West. The World Junior A Challenge is an annual international ice hockey tournament that showcases junior A level players under 20 years old. The six teams featuring this year's tournament are from the US, Czech Republic, Russia, Switzerland, and Canada, which has two squads, Canada East and Canada West Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this will mark the first time since the inception of the tournament 2006 that will be hosted in Ontario. This will provide an economic boost to local business and tourism, both in Durham and Northumberland region. It's great news for hockey enthusiasts across Ontario. It creates a wonderful opportunity to showcase our hockey town to the international hockey community. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank World Junior Challenge event chair and former MPP Jerry Ouellette and Junior Hockey League governors Mark Mercier of the Cobra Cougars and Scott Muscari of the Whitby Fury for all their hard work. The 2015 tournament will take place December 31st to the 19th, and I encourage all Ontarians to come out and cheer our Canadian play players. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thanks, uh, Speaker. It's with a, a heavy heart that I rise on behalf of everyone in North Grenville to pay tribute to, uh, to Harry Pratt. 
Harry had a heart so big, a soul, a soul so full of generosity and compassion that they became the foundation uh, on which so much of what's great in Kempville was built. To those who knew him and loved him, he was Mr. Kempville. A devoted husband and father who built a successful career in real estate, Harry was taken from us far too early on Sunday after a short battle with pancreatic cancer. And he fought that terrible disease long enough to see his beloved daughter married the day before. The ceremony was held at the Kempville District Hospital, which always had such a special place in Harry's big heart. He was a true champion for that hospital, not only as a fundraiser, but in using his leadership to make it one of the finest small town hospitals in Ontario. Speaker, that's how it was with Harry. Many people raised funds to build things, but bricks and mortar weren't enough for Harry Pratt. He wanted to build organizations by inspiring those around him to think big and to be great. And that's why the impact of Harry Pratt's life isn't measured by the dollars that he raised. His legacy is the lives he changed today and tomorrow because of the stronger, more resilient community he built. We all owe it to Harry, his wonderful wife Sheila, and their entire family who shared so much of him with us to keep building on the remarkable legacy he entrusted to us. Thank you very much, Speaker. Further member statements, the member from Tomiskimi Cochrane. Speaker, the residents of Northeast Ontario continue to question this government's actions regarding the Ontario Northland Transportation Commission and the services it provides to Northerners. As you may recall, this government cancelled our passenger train, our only passenger train, promising in return enhanced bus service. Yet it took a, 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 yet it took a call to the Ontario Human Rights Commission to actually force this government to provide those enhanced buses. Since then, it's embarked on a modernization uh, transformation, so it's closed bus stations, now it's cancelled bus services, and its latest buzzword is meaningful change. And as part of that meaningful change, it's locked out 200 workers for a month. Yet in this very house, the Minister of Labour said that we have the best mediators in the country. The workers have asked for mediation. The, the government is in full control of this situation. The ONTC is a commission under the government. What the workers are wanting to know and what the people of Northeastern Ontario want to know, to the Minister of Northern Development Mines and to the Premier, what exactly does meaningful change mean? It certainly doesn't mean Merry Christmas. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. And the same member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to share with the House that I was delighted to visit the Royal York Road United Church last month for an informative networking breakfast and to help celebrate the 10th anniversary of Ecolinks Etobicoke, a local ecumenical group that focuses on social justice. Ecolinks Etobicoke is made up of representatives from 10 different churches in Etobicoke Lakeshore with approximately 4,000 parishioners. The outreach committees of these churches realized some time ago the need for local churches to cooperate, coordinate, and inform each other of events and activities. As they developed, the participants realized that they shared concerns about social issues facing our community, and subsequently, Ecolinx has often contacted local politicians from all levels of government to advise them on these concerns. Ecolinx meets regularly, and it has uh, hosted a number of political uh, uh, town halls, and they've been very supportive, Mr. Speaker, of the province's poverty reduction strategy. In my meetings with them, we've talked about, amongst other things, our long-term affordable housing strategy and best practices for housing and homelessness. And with the recent situation in Syria, Ecolinx's current efforts are being directed towards refugee resettlement in Etobicoke Lakeshore. I want to congratulate uh, the 4,000 parishioners and the 10 churches that make up the Ecolinx network and wish them a happy 10th anniversary. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, I rise today because of the impact the government's health care cuts are having on my constituents. 
I've heard from many constituents who've had their surgery scheduled, but are now being told that they have to wait many, many months into the new fiscal year because there is no money for their surgeries. These are not numbers. These are people who are facing a terrible situation because of these delays. People like the senior whose cataract surgery has been postponed until four months after her driving retest. People like the adult with lifelong development disability who is waiting for cataract surgery to help improve his vision and balance. People who are in constant pain waiting for hip surgery. According to the local paper, there are 30 people waiting to have hip surgery at Woodstock Hospital, with some already waiting for two years. The impact of cataract and hip surgery is life-changing. All these people should be receiving their surgery as scheduled, but instead, for Christmas, they received the devastating news that they need to wait many months because the government has mismanaged the budget. Helping these people and planning the health care system properly should be the government's priority. Instead, they have wasted millions billions, and are now cutting it from health care that people depend on. I ask the government to stop making up, making up for their mismanagement by cutting the services that people need. And for Christmas, give my constituents the news they deserve, that there will be no more devastating delays for these life-changing surgeries. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good news, Speaker, from the great riding of Etobicoke North. I've spoken from this chair about the uh, hospital expansion, about the eight stations of the uh, LRT. I'd now like to uh, inform my colleagues and through you to the people of Ontario of the $75 million expansion in partnership with Infrastructure Ontario at Humber College the North Campus. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's an extraordinary new facility, Speaker. I've had the privilege of uh, touring parts of it. Uh, we're talking about a new library, gallery, student showcase, uh, a new school of liberal arts and sciences, an international center, office for student success and engagement, registrar's office, administration, enhanced student services, peer tutoring, mentoring, test centers, and career advisories. Uh, this speaker will house or will offer space for approximately 2,200 students to study at any single time, and perhaps more if they bundle up on a single chair, as students tend to do on occasion. And it's an extraordinary, uh, and I would say even architectural gift, along to the educational sphere, along with the educational sphere, to the Great Riding of Etobicoke North. It is one more sign, Speaker, of the extraordinary commitment that this government is making under the Premier Wynne's leadership to enhancing opportunity, education and prosperity for the promise of the province of Ontario. I kid you not, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Davenport. So thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I rise today to extend my sincerest thank you to all those that participated in the My Community is United Standing Together with Our Neighbours event at the Islamic Info and Dawa Centre last Saturday in my riding of Davenport. I would especially like to thank the organizers of this event, Joe Abbey Coburg, Director of Faith in the City, and Imam Shabir Ali of the Islamic Information Dawa Centre for opening up his doors to the community. The event was attended by hundreds of people, including individuals individuals, faith leaders, organizations, and elected officials from Davenport and across the GTA. As we all know, in the past few weeks, we have seen an increase in hate crimes targeting the Muslim communities in Toronto and across our province. It was within this disturbing and unsettling context that I very proudly stood together with my colleagues, neighbours, and fellow Ontarians at the Islamic Information Dawa Centre in Davenport. Together we stood in strong support of unity and inclusivity, as well as to reaffirm our commitment across our, all community and government levels to working to build a hate-free society. As an elected official and as a Canadian, I condemn all forms of violence here at home and especially those targeting places of worship and members of the Muslim community. These highly disturbing acts of hatred and racism have no place in our province and go against the Canadian values of inclusivity and diversity. Being welcoming, open and inclusive makes us who we are as Canadians and what makes this country and this province the greatest in the world to live in. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.